Hi, this week's lab is on the current balance. Being one of the last labs of 1225, therefore your first year physics journey, it's a bit of a monster of a lab. It features two circuits, three currents, two forces, four lengths, three diameters, and three averages. It's quite a bit to go around, and therefore we really, really stress the use of subscripts and the detailed labels. In any case, please do read through your lab manual in great detail, and hopefully this video will help you sort some of that out. But putting all that aside, what's the one central idea we're trying to prove in this lab is the force on a piece of wire carrying current in a magnetic field, namely F equals ILB. So what we're going to do is we're going to measure this force and see if working backwards it gets us the magnetic field that we predict. So, the force we're going to measure with a balance. Here's a regular balance. Um, you've used these many times in your lab, so you know we put some unknown mass or force on this side, and we keep adding masses that we know on the other side. And when the whole balance is balanced again, what we do is we add up all these masses that we know, 50, 20, 20, 10, 100 grams, then we know whatever happens here, it's going to be 100 grams, which of course it is. So there's a regular balance. Your current balance looks like this. It's a piece of plastic. It's got a couple pivot points that you can adjust back and forth. And these are also F as contacts, so you can put the current through this copper part here. If the current runs through this way, and we expose it to a magnetic field that goes like that. Using the right hand rule, we know that this piece of wire at the end here has a current magnetic field. It will feel magnetic force that pushes it down, like that. So to balance that out, we can add weights on this side that we know, and therefore we can find out how big the magnetic force is. There's one slight complication with this guy because the distance from the pivot point to where it uses a force and to where we put the weights on is different. We have to account for that by measuring both of these lengths. So now let's put it into the actual setup and we'll see how it all comes together. So here's the rest of the setup. We've got the power supply, the rheostat, ammeter, and this lovely thing which is a solenoid. Uh, remember from last week from the slinky, if we send a current through a solenoid we can get the, a magnetic field that goes this way and that way. And that's one of the circuit one of the two circuits in this lab, this one being the one that powers the solenoid and generates the magnetic field. Now, there are four terminals on here. Only two of these connect to the solenoid, so that's the one you're going to connect to. So that's going to be the... You're going to power the solenoid up with six volts of power, sorry, of voltage. The current we're going to get once at the very beginning of the lap and once at the very end because as it heats up the current's going to change slightly. Then you have the other circuit which sends the current through here. We want that current to be adjustable so that's why we have the rheostat and the ammeter on series. This of course goes into these two terminals which then connects to the pivot point of the current balance. So please excuse the messy wire, but the first thing you want to do before you power it on is you want to make sure that the pivot point is at the right place. You don't want the current balance to be hitting either the front or anything in back here. So we do have to adjust the pivot point until that does happen. Whew. Okay, so this is more or less balanced. You definitely want to look down the barrel here to make sure that as it tips back and forth, it's not hitting anything. It's free to move around. And this, still not turning it on, you want to measure the distance now, now that you've got the pivot point set, from the pivot point to the end of the wire and the end of this wire. Okay, here I'm finally ready to turn the power on. Um, the bands is more or less flat. Before you turn the power on, you want to use the piece of cardboard to mark where the zero point is. 
so that you have a point of reference. And the first thing you want to check is the polarity. When we turn it on, we want the current balance to flip up, like this. Because if it's flipped down, then no matter how much weight we add on, it's not going to go back to balance. So this is the correct direction. If you don't have the correct orientation, just flip these two terminals around and you'll be back in business. Okay, so now the polarity is correct, then here comes the most fun part of the lab, is that we're going to pick up these tiny little pieces of wire and try and put them on the current balance. That one failed. Ah, oh, that one got on. Oh, that one flew off. And so on and so forth. You get two of them on there, adjust the current until it bounces again, then you try for three, try for four, so on and so forth. Best of luck!